Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman, and today we are in our backyard because it's nice and hot. It's about 90 degrees with probably 90% humidity in the nice Kansas summer. And so I'm standing out in the scorching sun just for your automotive education students. Today we're going to talk a little bit about hooking up uh, a gauges. That's one of the first lessons that we do is, is, is learning how to hook up an AC gauge set. And there's a lot of things that students could do wrong as they are learning how to do that. And it, it, and, and it does take a while to kind of get the hang of, of how to operate an AC gauge set. So, so the first thing I want to talk about is that these two valves right here are considered the uh, manifold valves is what I'll call them. And so um, right now the manifold valves are closed. And so when you look at them, you kind of turn them clockwise so so the red one's going to turn clockwise and the blue one is going to turn clockwise but they're opposite of each other and so you kind of have to turn them opposite ways and so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that your manifold valves are closed now before i hook up my gauges and so you know right now i don't have my gauges hooked up and uh, the ends are uh, here uh, these are uh, these are uh, uh, valves at the um, end are uh, called service valves and so some gauges do not have um, valves on the end. They just have a quick connect, and that's all they have. But if you take a look at most of uh, most of the professional equipment you have, they have uh, uh, valves in there. Um, I could turn this uh, valve clockwise, which is all the way going in, which is open. Sorry, you can't see that. <laughs> and the refrigerant is still in the gauge. It doesn't come out or anything like that. So, so typically when you're going to hook these up, you're going to want to make sure that these um, valves are backed all the way out. So you turn them to the left counterclockwise. And there's a little straighter valve in the very center there that is um, going to um, push up or push down in order to open up the straighter valve for the AC system. So, so for both units, it's kind of a good idea to make sure that they're, you know, all the way to the left, all the way backed out. So when you hook up your quick connect, you don't have that shredder valve trying to push on or trying to try to have your um, your hose try to push on that shredder valve in order to try to open up the um, the AC system. And, you know, there could be over 100 pounds of pressure in there trying to push up. So it's just easier to hook up your gauges like this, especially when you're in a real tight position. Sometimes you got your arm in a position. I know I did one the other day where I could only get like one little finger on the quick connect. And I had a hard time just pulling the quick connect back just because of um, of, of, of my finger position. And so trying to do that along with trying to fight pressure is very, very hard. So again, so, so having um, uh, ends with um, uh, service valves on them is a, is a real big plus when trying to hook them up so you don't have to try to fight that pressure. One of the things I want to do before I hook up my gauges real quick though, is that I, if I take a look at my uh, pressures, I got high side is reading 150 and low side is reading 70. So what I like to do with my uh, gauges before I test them, and again, I just grabbed one out of the uh, automotive uh, department at uh, Pittsburgh State University. Uh, these are the ones that the students use. Is that they could have been dropped, that someone could have used them over the summertime. I don't know if they're calibrated right. So, so, so number one, they have, they have uh, pressure in there, so that's good. They're holding pressure. There's no leaks in the system. But number two is I want to make sure that my gauges are somewhat calibrated. Now, now before I, I go through and do this with your gauge, you want to make sure that your center hose has a shutoff valve and again it's the law it should be within 12 inches of the end so the key is that i should i should have that that, that valve um that uh, quarter turn valve closed and so you know if it's um if it's uh perpendicular you know 90 degrees to that valve it, it's closed when i take this valve and move it either up or down i'm not sure which way it goes um all the refrigerant inside this um yellow hose is going to escape and so we don't particularly want to do that so key is you want to make sure that you keep that uh quarter turn valve i call it closed so what i'm going to do is since my valve is closed i'm going to open up both these gauges and so i'm going to turn one over here so turn it to the left turn it to the left so loosen it up righty tighty lefty loosey and what I want to check here, number one, that there's no refrigerant coming out of this, so that's good. But number two, I want to make sure that my gauges are reading the same because uh, this is a really quick check I could do. It's a static test uh, just to make sure that my gauges are calibrated correctly. So if, the, if my high side is reading 100 and my low side is reading, you know, 110, you know, well, not 110, one, um, one. 103 <laughs> so you know within three psi of each other i'm not going to worry so much about that but if it was 33 psi off i'd be 
um, I'd be uh, very concerned. I would try to zero out my gauges would be the next thing I'd do to try to fix the problem. So it's just a real quick test. The gauges should read the same. If they're not reading the same, it's a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close these. And so if you notice, my red valve, I'm turning away from me. And the uh, blue manifold valve, I'm turning towards me. And you'll get used to that, making sure that they're that they're um, they're they're closed. Don't take your grill a hand and uh, try to wrench it down. You know that's not good. And so, key is is that now I'm ready to hook up my um, my gauges. And so uh, to do that again, we want to make sure that both our service valves are backed off, and then we simply connect our quick connect to the AC system. And so if you take a look at these real quick, um, and again you'll get used to this, is that the high side is uh, larger in diameter. And the small side is smaller in diameter. So again, when you're looking for your service ports on the system, you're gonna look for your high side, which is could be on the discharge line, could be on the liquid line, and then your low side service port, which could also be on the liquid line after the restriction, and then also on the suction line. Could be on the compressor too. So again, you're gonna be looking for those. So we'll go ahead and, and, and um, we'll do that next. Okay, so what vehicle we're dealing with today is a 2011 uh, Chevrolet Suburban, and this is an orifice tube system. We got the liquid line right here, and here's the orifice tube over here on the passenger side. And so I got a, a cap right here, and so we want to make sure that the cap is on. And so that is my high side fitting, because that's the bigger one. And so you know you got a quick connect is all you got to do. And so I'm gonna again pull my quick connect, put that on there, and pull it just like you do an air chuck. Ah, push down on it there you go and I always pull up make sure it's up there and then my and my low side service port is right there. Ooh, there's a little bit of pressure on that one. So I could have a Schrader valve uh, leaking, but that, that pressure cap came off pretty good. So again, I got my quick connect on here. See if I can do it with my left hand. And if you notice, I did not open up the service port yet. There, and make sure it's pulled off. There, I pull it just to make sure. And there you go. And so I got my low side service port on the accumulator. And my high side service port right in front of the restriction of the orifice tube right there. I have not opened up my service valve yet. So when I open up my service valve, I'm going to reach down here and I'm going to turn these valves and I'm going to turn them to the, um, turn them to the right. So that is going to open them up and is what that's going to do. But I want to show you something before I do that. What I want students to uh, pay attention to is that when you open up your service valves on the um, on the vehicle, you pay attention to your gauges and make sure that your gauges move. And so, um, you know, right now my gauge is reading a little bit over 100 PSI because we're in the hot sun. It's starting to warm up a little bit. But the key is, is that I want to make sure that there's no restriction in these hoses. I want to make sure my service valves are working correctly. So when I open up the service valves to the vehicle, pay attention to the gauges and make sure they move a little bit. It, if they move a little bit, you know that there's refrigerant getting into your gauges. And so, so let's, let's do that real quick. We're going to open up the uh, high side service port first because that's where I can reach easy. And I'm going to turn it to my right, so clockwise, and, and that Schrader valve is pushing down or that little pinto on the, is pushing down on the Schrader valve. So there's a lot of refrigerant to go and oh, I saw it move just a hair. And that's fine. That's all I need to do is I need that way I know for sure that there's refrigerant getting in there. You hate to diagnose a problem and that gauge never moves. And then you worry, well, what, is there an AC problem or is there really refrigerant getting into the um, my gauges or my gauge is a problem? And let's take a look at the low side too. So we'll turn right now we're at about 105. The low side will open up the valve. I can barely reach it. And still hold on to the gauge. There we go. Just heard refrigerant pressure. Okay, so the valve was all the way turned in. And oh, it went up to 120 or something like that. So now I know, now I know that my gauges um, are connected to the vehicle. The next step on this would be to um, start the vehicle and watch the gauges and see what they do. The key is, is that if the AC is on, the gauges should do something different, right? The gauges are reading about the same. You know, I got about 110 on the low side, you know, probably about 110 on the high side. You know, that's kind of normal. So, you know, you figure that, that the gauge pressure on a static system, this is a static system, 
uh, with the vehicle off, the AC hasn't been on for a while, it's going to be around ambient temperature. You know, the higher it goes, the higher the pressure is going to be. So at 70, it's not exactly, uh, well, at, at 70 degrees, it's going to be about 70 PSI on both sides. Well, we, when you're at 100 degrees, the pressure is going to be higher than 100. It's going to be roughly around, you know, 110, 115, somewhere around there. There's a pressure temperature chart that we'd have to look at to, to know that exactly. So the key is, is that those are the pressures I would expect to see when the system is off and the system is stabilized. And, you know, so we're looking at the underhood uh, compartment. If the vehicle was running for a long time and came in and you hooked up the gauges and the engine was hot, I would expect the pressures to be a lot higher than that because the underneath the uh, underneath the hood is going to be what 150 degrees or something like that. So we're going to start the system. We're going to uh, take a look at the gauges on an AC system and see what they look like next. Okay, so it is about. 120 degrees inside my vehicle when I first started it up. The vehicle was a little warm, but not hot by any means. I hear the fans kicking on right now. Oh, fans just went on high. So we'll see if you guys can hear me or not. And take a look here. I'm going to get my microphone up a little bit higher. See how that goes. There we go. So if I take a look at my high side, you know, we're around 225 right now because it's a hot day. The low side is around 60. And so, uh, you know, the system is hot and we expect it to be working really hard at this point in time. So that's kind of some uh, normal gauge readings. You know, right now I have my doors and uh, windows open. So I'm doing a, a very high stress test right now. As the car w warms up, or sorry, as the car cools down and the engine warms up, I expect my, uh, I expect my, uh, probably my low side gauge to start coming down a little bit as the system cools down. But again, on a hot day, you're going to have gauge readings, you know, above 200. And then the low side is going to be a little high. Again, it's starting to come down right now. Now, one of the mistakes that students tend to make when they first start using AC gauges is they open up these valves and the vehicle is running. Don't do that. <laughs> okay? Now, the, um, the, um, now if, if, if this valve, if this water turn valve was open during that time, your refrigerators can escape the atmosphere, so, so, so you're letting the, the actual refrigerator of the vehicle out. So don't do that. So this is closed right now. My quarter turn valve is closed. But what will happen is that if I open up these two valves, the high side and the low side are going to read exactly the same PSI. In case you're opening up the system, the, the refrigerator is going from this uh, high side gauge to a low side gauge, and it's actually bypassing, bypassing the restriction. I'm going to open it up just a little bit so you guys can see that. See how the high side went up that high? So if you see your low side up way high like that, come and check your valves and make sure your manifold valves are closed. You want these closed during any type of diagnosis. The only time I'm opening these valves is when I'm doing some kind of special procedure. So again, keep these closed for right now as you're doing just basic AC diagnosis. You see that my low side is starting to come down a little bit. So it's coming down into what I'm going to consider a normal range for a hot, hot day. Uh, high side, you know, is um, maybe at about 180 right now on a hot day. Okay, we're going to turn off the system now and we're going to see how long it takes to equalize. And so what I'm hearing on this orifice tube system is I'm hearing some hissing sounds. And so that hissing sound is the, um, is the equalization of high pressure or low pressure through the orifice tube. The orifice tube is very high on this particular vehicle, so it's easy for me to hear. If I'm taking a look at my pressures, you know, uh, we're looking at uh, about 70 PSI, close to 80 PSI on the low side. The high side just dropped below 100, and so they're about equalized right now. So that's probably 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds, oh, maybe a minute. I didn't, I didn't watch it, and again, we could play it back. But the key is that an orifice tube system, it should equalize very fast, you know, under a minute by any means, I, normally around 30 seconds. Um, and so if it took an extremely long time to equalize, I'm worried about there being a restriction somewhere in the system. 
This is Scott Norman, and hopefully you learned a little bit about what to do when you're hooking up your AC uh, gauge sets. I have another video on how to disconnect your, your AC uh, gauges, and so uh, watch that if you're wanting to know the proper way to disconnect the gauges. If you're looking for more uh, automotive education videos, you can follow my YouTube channel. Just look for Professor Pintane. I'm also on Facebook, and I have a website, uh, professorpintane.com. Thank you very much. Hopefully you guys are staying cool during this hot summer of 2020 and you guys have a good day. Thank you very much.